welcome to part three in our series escape warnings let us pray father we ask for grace this moment bless us uniquely speak to me speak through me and bless your people in jesus name amen the title for this thought section is the territories to cover from revelation chapter 14 verse 6c you know in revelation 14 6c it declares that the angel had the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation tribe tongue and people you see this verse actually shows the global scope of the gospel commission and it actually helps us to emphasize the vast territories that must be covered before the coming of christ the second time today I'll be exploring with you these uh, territories, what they represent, why every corner of the earth must be reached, and uh, the implications of this mission, and why Christ has not yet returned. And then we will also consider practical ways to fulfill this commission in the shortest possible time. First, I'll be talking, looking at the, I'll be looking at the question: What are the territories to cover? The territories mentioned. In the book of Revelation, chapter 14, 6c, are every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. You see, this represents actually the entire world. You know, no part of the earth is excluded from this mission. If you are still with me on this channel, please do what to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and the notification bell, and share this message to others. Friends, what the entire world represents includes the culture every language group and the ethnic community actually in matthew chapter 24 verse 14 that passage of the scripture reinforces this when jesus says and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come friends the command is clear the gospel must reach everyone and everywhere. The other question I want to consider is why must all territories be covered? Friends, God's law is universal and his desire is for everyone to be saved. In John 3 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friends, the gospel is for all humanity and everyone deserves the opportunity to hear the good news of salvation as recorded in Genesis 3 in John 3 16 that no one should perish in 2 Peter 3 verse 9 it tells us that the Lord is a good not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance you see covering all territories is not just a task it is a divine mandate motivated by god's love for every soul are you with me my brother and my sister or wherever you may be please we need to look at the implication of this mission have a look at the fact that this gospel is universal see the mission to reach all territories carries actually profound implications first is that it's uh, actually highlight or underscores the inclusivity of the gospel see no one is excluded based on race no one is excluded based on nationality no one is excluded based on language or social status you know in Acts chapter 10 verse 10 Acts chapter 10 verse 34 to 35 Bible states in truth I perceive that God shows no partiality but in every nation, whoever fears him and walks righteousness is accepted by him. Friends, the second reason, the first reason, don't forget, the first implication of this mission is that it actually it, it gives us the inclusivity of the gospel. Everyone is included. The second one now is actually the responsibility of the church. See, we are called to be ambassadors for Christ. You know, do you remember the teaching angels in this Revelation 14 
actually symbolize the believers in the faith who have said this message and have proclaimed it and have been called together into a church. All right. So the responsibility of the church is another implication of this mission. Because we are called together to be an ambassador for Christ or ambassadors for Christ, it represents, we are to represent, you know, Jesus to the world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, that is stated there that we are ambassador of Christ, let to represent him on this earth. So we have to tell the world about our kingdom. We are not of this world, but we are the king, children of the kingdom of God. And so there is a time that our king from our kingdom is going to evacuate his people from this earth, which is more like the world in essence. But we are to prepare them for that. So this message has implication for the world. It shows our responsibility. Friends, Actually, when we look at this task, it is monumental. But the truth is, it is not impossible. We look at the entire world, the countries, the regions, you know, we look at it by form of uh, 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 the region. You see, it is massive, it is colossal in nature. But with God, all things are possible. So with God's guidance and actually the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, this God, by the grace of God, can reach every corner of the, uh, that is why in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible promised us, uh, and I quote, But you shall receive power, you know, means when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in, uh, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the world. Friends, we have our Jerusalem. We are to reach those who are immediate to us. We have those who are around us, our Judea and then Samaria and to the end of the earth. So we need to worry about people in other countries so much, but we can first begin this mission by reaching our immediate environment, our families, our friends, our classmates, our colleagues in the office, wherever we are. That is our jurisdiction that is our Jerusalem we can begin to reach them there when we are all doing this at our various corner you see that gradually the global concept of this whole message or the the territories of all this entire world will begin to be reached if all believers can put their hands together to do this individual wherever you are call me right now I'm in Nigeria I'm in Australian state I'm in Ede I'm in a delicate university community. See, I have to begin to talk to my family member about this. I talk about this, talk to the student, the staff, about this message. I have to reach out to them. So wherever you are, it's a Jerusalem. Begin to reach out to them. Now the question is, another question is, why has Christ not returned? You see, one of the central questions often asked is why Jesus has not yet returned. The answer actually is in the unfinished task of this God global evangelism. Friends, Jesus explicitly stated that in his return, that his return is contingent upon the gospel being preached to all nations. In Mark 24, verse 14, like I quoted before, actually stated that his gospel must reach the entire world, then the end will come. So until the message, which is the three angels' messages, reaches every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, the second coming will continually be delayed. Friends, this actually is not what reflects a form of slowness, you see, from the hand of God, but rather it is His mercy that He has been showing forth unto us. Or it's by His mercy that we have not been consumed so far. So God is not slack, God is not slow, as concerning the promise of the return of Christ, but He's just only being merciful. And His desire is that many as possible, you know, we hear the gospel and have the opportunity. To respond and also to the to another extent, it also shows that we too are delaying that is coming. We are not putting this gospel to as many as possible that can hear the message and have the opportunity to make decisions for Jesus. In 2 Peter 3, verse 9, that will remind us again the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some kind of slackness, but is long suffering towards us, toward us, not willing that any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. Friends, God's delay is a manifestation of His patience and grace, giving to us more time to fulfill this mission. How can we then achieve this mission quickly together? Uh, so the truth is, when we look at the urgency of this task, what can we do to ensure that the gospel reaches all territories in the shortest possible time? These are some of my 
uh, possible uh, step, practical step that we could, we could do. Number one is personal evangelism. This, this message, this series is just what us taking action. We are keep saying some of these things and keep repeating them in the way of this path. It's intentional so that we know what we need to do. Personal evangelism. So every member is called to be a witness and uh, we have to share the gospel within your immediate circle. So the first point is personal evangelism. So share with your friend with your family, friends, and colleagues. And because these are crucial points in our lives where we can reach our access to in Proverbs 11 verse 30, the Bible says, He who wins souls is wise. See, we have to use every opportunity to share our faith and invite others to accept Jesus Christ. Number two is global mission initiatives. Friends, we cannot be if we cannot do the work personally, we need to support and participate in the global mission initiatives. That is very, very vital. See, as a, as a member of the church, we have a strong mission focus, you know, with programs like uh, the Global Mission of Audience, you know, the Adventist Frontier Missions, you are working to reach the unreached uh, people groups. And then, when we are contributing to all these initiatives, whether through our financial support, our prayer, or volunteering, we are helping to advance the gospel in a hard to reach areas. Number three is use of technology, which is what I'm using with you, friends. In this digital age, technology provides us unprecedented opportunities to spread the gospel. Social media, website, podcast, uh, online evangelism, you know, can reach people across the globe who might never, you know, uh, never enter a church. Like they just they scrolling through their phone, through their gadget, they have access to your ministration. You wouldn't know who you can reach, even if you are supposed to have 10, 20,000 followers, as many you can have. You can even promote that same video to countries that are far away, and Facebook will help you through a Facebook advert to share this message with them. I have done in the time past, and people from different countries reach out and we had hundreds and thousands of millions of uh, thousands of views because I, I was able to uh, promote it with, with a few dollars that I had at that particular point in time. And by God's grace, it's what we see. Uh, with this I have to do at all time. See, in Mark 16 verse 15, the Bible says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, with technology, this is more achievable than ever before. And then, we are also going to look at the fourth way we can do this work, is through training and discipleship. As Leaves of Autumn Ministries is a powerful, uh, one of our cardinal points, what we do, and what we are trying to do, we are uh, train and gratitude some other person. So we are to make sure we empower people to train them in evangelism. See, and also on in Bible study mentor, in discipleship, you know, in that way, this this a way of reaching out will be very important. We, 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 we go easily in second Timothy two verse two. Everyone instruct us and quote and the things that you have heard from me among witnesses me these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. This was Paul instructing Timothy that he has to commit what he has, he has to instruct others what he has committed to him, not just for people who are faithful, so they can be able to teach others also. So when believers, you know, are equipped to share their faith, the work of spreading the gospel will multiply in manifold ways. And then the fifth part is the last part of the ways we can use vision is prayer and dependence on the Holy Spirit. See, friends, nothing can substitute the power of prayer and uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Evangelism is not just a human endeavor, my friends. It is a divine mission. So we must seek God's guidance and His empowerment on a daily basis. That's why in Zechariah 4, verse 6, the Bible reminds us that not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of us. So when we seek God, you know, this prayer will open doors to, to, to for us to share the gospel and will open the heart of minds, heart to be receptive, and the act from the Holy Spirit will be poured upon us to accelerate the work in man. So we must depend upon the Holy Spirit. As we pray this whole thing. So, friends, as we come to a conclusion in this particular part three, the message of Revelation 14 CC is actually challenging us to reach every nation, tribe, 
tongue and people with the everlasting gospel. See, the territories to cover are vast indeed, but the task is not insurmountable. With the power of the Holy Spirit, the use of modern technology, and the collective effort of the global church, we can fulfill this mission. Amen. Christ's return hinges on our faithfulness to this calling, friends. Let us dedicate ourselves to the work so that soon we can see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven as promised in Mark 24, verse 30. Then the signs of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, according to Mark 24, 30. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power. Friends, we must preach this message. We must warn the earth. We must prepare them for that to escape when Christ shall come. If you don't want the tribes to mourn, we must spread the gospel. If you want them to rejoice, we must spread the gospel. The vision is to be in their hands. But let's do our part and the Lord will bless us. If we do not, may, may we be found faithful, friends, covering every territory with the gospel and hastening the return of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you because you have blessed us. I pray that may we sense the urgency of this work and we'll carry forward with power. Help my brother, help my sister, help this group of people, help whoever watching this right now or listening to this, that you, O oh God, will empower God with the Holy Spirit and will carry this work forward with urgency in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share a comment with us what you think about this series and be a blessing to others. Share the link to others. And if you are new, subscribe and click on the notification bell. See you in part four.